Hi guys, it's John with you again, and it's time to start building. Yeah, time to start building this uh, German 8 ton semi track 20mm flak whirling uh, STK FZ71. Okay, this is the, uh, the old 70s kit. Okay, and as I said in the unboxing, it has been re released. Um, whether they cleaned up the moulds or anything else because I have seen unboxings of the newer one and they're the exact same there's nothing I didn't see any difference whatsoever so maybe they've you know cleaned up the moulds or whatever but it's been re-released anyway so therefore you can still get this kit okay and it's not actually very expensive it's actually quite reasonable so I'm gonna get it stuck in and I'm going to get it made so let's get down to the bench let's have a let's have a look at the instructions and let's get started okay okay so here we are um, as you can see I've already read through the instructions and I've uh, marked them off there in just into little uh, little subsections as in you know I'm gonna get this much done uh, we'll show what I've done and then we'll carry on so in this first bit I'm going to get step one and step two done okay and all that then really is it's the um, the pedestal and the size of the pedestal for the uh, for the, the four guns themselves um, and then we'll carry on again as normal right so we've got a couple of pieces here to uh, assemble together right so I'll get those done and as usual, I'll get back on and uh, we'll have a look and see how all that uh, how all that worked out. Okay? Now, so, that bit has all been done, right? And here is our pedestal. Okay? Now, being a typical Tamiya kit, that all kind of clipped into place very, very nicely. Um, slight little bit of difficulty putting this piece on the top on here attaching that to that right <coughs> it was just that it was a little tight and I had to kind of wiggle it in but once it went in it, 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 perfect perfect fit um, so there's our pedestal and um, this centerpiece is still movable I can feel it moving around inside Right, so that's the uh, that's this little piece here. All right, it's still moving around inside. So therefore, our guns are going to go uppy downy. That's yep, that is a technical term, uppy downy. Okay, so now we we'll carry on. Okay, in our next one now we're getting step three done. And in step three we're working on the shooty things. Okay, and like I said in the unboxing, I'm going to drill out the ends of these little guns end of the shooty things just just when I say drill them out I just mean just drill in a little bit nothing major just kind of bore out the the center of them a bit just so they'll kind of they'll, they'll look hollowed in um, and you don't have to go down the full second lengths of them or anything like that just a little bit in I'll show you now when I have it done um, and get them all attached onto the thing doesn't look too much to be quite honest with you it looks a uh, Reasonable enough, we're getting two of them done, a left and a right. So, lickety split, I'll get them done and we'll come back and we will have a look at them. Okay, so bear with me and we'll do it. Okay, now I did say I was only going to do step three, but I'm after doing step three and step four. Step four basically was just the front of the, uh, the bulletproof plates as they call them here in this and it was just a piece onto each one so it was pointless making that a separate uh, clip on its own so I'm after doing, I'm after doing the two okay so we'll have a quick look at the guns the shooty things All right. now the, I tell you they're very very nice very very nicely moulded they came out very very nice indeed um, everything went in together absolutely beautifully okay and I've even as you can see there I'm after drilling out the barrels a little bit like I said you just want to kind of hollow them out just just the tips of them okay 
And when they're painted up then, I mean, we would be painted in sort of dark iron and things like that. Um, and just a little drop of silver paint into there. Bob's your uncle and Mary is your aunt. Right, so it's left and right, both identical. Okay, and then we've got the two sides then, right? A uh, little bit of an angle goes on to them, they fit in perfectly. Again, beautiful fit in all of these. Um, everything fits in really, really nice. Just a little bit of clean up, small bits of uh, flash, okay? And you know, to clean off the flash, just give it a little, a little nick, a good sharp uh, knife. In the back of the knife, then scrape off, blow off your excess. And that's all that's needed. Okay, there we go. Just tiny little bits of flash, and I only noticed the flash really when I got sort of looked at the back of them. And you can see the flash. Now, there are, I must admit, big, thick, and ugly. Um, ejector pin marks right um, and they're in places that it's going to be very very hard to fill and get in there with um, with filler and things if that's the kind of thing you do now I only do it really when they're when they're very bad but they're not actually that bad it's just that there's a lot of them there and they're kind of reasonably hidden as well so I'm not worried too much about them to be honest which I'm not I'm not worried about too much about them at all okay so, moving on now, uh, we're on to step five. Um, step five and step six. Actually, I'll do step five and step six. I'm going to have the guns then finished off. Okay. Um, we've got to attach our gun piece, our two guns onto the thing. Um, if we look at the back of the guns, right, they've got uh, sort of, you can see it there. It's a cut out piece, cut out piece, so they'll only go together that way then to make the perfect circle. The danger is that you'll end up uh, gluing them inside onto that, you know. Um, but uh, I suppose if they glue in, in there, it's not going to be too bad, really, is it? Um, the danger is uh, they don't want to fit in. A little bit of clean up there on those. That's why it's good to kind of dry fit everything. There we go, a little bit of a push. Okay, so there we go. That's just pushed in, right? Ta da! So, you know, uh, I'll carry on with them. So I'm getting uh, step five and step six done. And uh, we'll come back there and we'll discuss how all that went. Now, there is, it says here, a bit of a uh, bit of heating and melty onto the thing. Not a lover of that because sometimes it can come out quite bad. But we'll get it done anyway. We'll have a look and we'll see it all. So I'll come back to you when I step six done and that will be the guns finished off. Okay. So I get that done and we'll be back. Just like that. Okay. So I'm after getting the gun all completed. Alright. Um, right up to step six so we'll have a look at that and I'll tell you wow this is a, this is a kit within itself really actually you can buy this as a kit um, I know it's got an extra kind of a stand thing with it but um, wow it, it, it's absolutely beautiful it really really is um, as you can see gun goes oops guns will go up and down right We'll even operate from that. Right. So let's get a bit of better light in there. We can have a look at all that in there. Okay. We'll be pretty awkward painting it, but um, luckily enough it's mostly all the same colour, so I'm not really too bothered about that. Um, after looking at it now again I'm kind of sorry I didn't really do a bit more on the uh, on the ejector pin marks I'm going to do a little bit now in a while I'll give them a bit of an old scraping out and things 
might give them a little bit of a fill just just to tone it down a bit because they are they are pretty bad so i'm going to work on them for a while before i kind of move on but um i leave it aside for the time being anyway it, it it does definitely need more clean up on that okay just to get rid of those ejector pin marks and like i said i should have really worked on them while they were uh, flat pieces before i glued them on but um just a bit of enthusiasm meant to get it meant to get it done so anyway let's move on with the construction of the rest of it okay so by the time i come back to you the next time i'll have these bits done right so we have an extra bit here for step seven we've got a couple of little sub assemblies to do first we have the uh, exhaust pipe to be done with the uh, with the silencer and um, there's the winch has to be constructed okay a bit of thread and all of that okay and then we're working away then on these here right these will be the main drive sprockets for the uh, for the half track section for the track section should I say um, look fairly straightforward um, doesn't say what this bar is but I presume it's one of the, uh, the brass rods that I give with it okay so we've got to construct the, um, the drive sprockets three pieces for that we've got the top the bottom and a little poly cap um, we've got an inner piece then into these little uh, housing sections right and uh, this bit here then goes on to that right okay so that's step seven with the, uh, with the little um, the sub assemblies like I said and step 8 then has us uh, installing the, the sub assemblies that we made the uh, winch uh, the winch <laughs> the winch not a winch the winch the exhaust pipe right if we call it here the muffler right it is an exhaust right um, two fuel tanks and um, we've also got some suspension okay there's four suspension pieces on there so I'll get up as far as step 8 done right and we'll have a look at that then before we move on any further okay so I'll do up as far as step 8 and then we'll come back again and have a look at that and hopefully I might even have the uh, the, the, the insides of that cleaned off and done up a little bit anyway um, I'm going to give them a scraping and we'll see how deep they are if they're a bit deep enough might be able to get a little bit of filler in there um, and we'll see we, we'll see we'll see like I said I should I, I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't uh, I didn't do it all beforehand but we'll get it done anyway we'll get it done okay so I'll be back to you as soon as I step eight done okay then so I'm going to get the step eight done then step uh, seven all right no step seven what I did was we made the uh, exhaust pipes up and also while I made them up, I'm a, I gave them a coat of uh, this gunk here, Mr. Surfacer 500. You know, just to kind of a good base for the rust because it, uh, they were a bit smooth. And as you know, rust isn't isn't really smooth, it's nice and chunky. Okay, and we also made up the winch, or the winch. <laughs> made up the winch. Um, I was right here with the shaft, it is one of the shafts, it, and it even says it there, shaft. Like, how did I miss that when I was uh, saying it earlier on? Anyway, uh, that went in absolutely fabulous, it really, really did. So far the fit in this kit is unbelievable, it really, really is. I can't get over the uh, the date of it, and, um, and, and the plastic is absolutely beautiful, there's nice weight in it, do you know what I mean? It's a good, good quality. So unbelievable and this kit is available now in your local hobby store if you are well it's available from uh, model hobbies okay which is the one i buy from now they're in england i'm in ireland i, I buy them over the over the um over the internet and uh, this kit is available 
and it's actually so reasonable. I'm not going to tell you the price, but check it out yourself. That's modelhobbies.co.uk. Now, they're not sponsoring me. They're not paying me anything for this ad or anything like that. So there's a free ad for you, lads. But I'll tell you, go to them. I find them absolutely fabulous. Their delivery is brilliant. And I get everything on time and all that, right? So, enough of that. A free plug, shall we call it. But anyway... Um, this kit is available from them and it is very very reasonable very very reasonable price just check it out yourselves anyway getting back onto this um, like I said I coated the uh, exhaust with um, with the Mr. Surfacer 500 we also have these the two um, fuel tanks now the reason that this is blue and black it was basically uh, for the clamps Okay, I had them. I glued them and clamped them, and uh, I had a blue, blue clamp on one and a black clamp on the other, just to kind of separate them. Didn't really need that way anyway, because they would have fitted in ground anyway. But just in case, I had it because they're they're slightly different numbers. There's A1 and A3, and there's an A1 and an A2. Um, you've got a thick and a thin piece that fit into there. It was just making it easier. Okay, um, I fitted the uh, the the winch winch. And uh, four of these um, suspension pieces. Okay, so we'll have a quick look at that anyway. Right. So as you can see, there's the um, there's the exhaust pipe, right, with the uh, with the muffler all done there. And as you see, it's all nicely roughed up with the uh, Mister Surfacer. Okay. Uh, there's the um, suspension parts. And the uh, the winch, 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 the dry sprocket there onto the winch. <laughs> a drive your winch, <laughs> the dry sprocket onto the winch. So the, you know it's power driven, and the fuel tanks. So okay, we also have the um, the the dry sprockets. They're all nicely fitted. And they spin away absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, that brass. Uh, um, rod is in there as well okay the shaft okay that's in place as well so like I said again absolutely beautiful 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 fit no problems with it whatsoever thumbs up thumbs up for that one anyway so we've got st section now we've got uh, step 9 and step 10 uh, we've got a small bit of sub assemblies here for the rear shaft bearing looks pretty damn simple I don't even know why they're bothering to, to sort of show it I just suppose it's just you know how to fit these in together it just kind of one interlocks into the other okay we've also got a uh, construction of rear wheels right so these are the uh, yeah they're all our, our, our wheels right um, 1661 should not be cemented. Where are we saying here? Construction of rear shift bearing 60 and 61. 60 and 61. They shouldn't be cemented in there. Okay. Why? I don't know. But I'm sure we'll find out after as we're building it all up. Okay. We've got a little back plate that goes on there for uh, the exhaust last little tip onto the exhaust we've got a tow hitch um, don't know what that is you've got a sort of a nut and bolt thing here which come in the kit as well we're fitting on our rear wheels okay so these are our rear wheels okay and um, I suppose they're calling them rear wheels, we'd normally call them uh, the idler wheel, but it's the rear wheel, okay. And also the uh, you're building up the front suspension. Now they look actually pretty complicated, but I'd say if we follow the instructions step by step and take our time, we should have no problems in that whatsoever, okay. So, I get all of them done, right, I get step 9 done, and I will get step 10 done, okay. And, and we've got our couple of little uh, sub assemblies. So I'll get them done and come back, and as usual, we will have a look and a discussion about them. Okay. 
and here we go step 9 and 10 now completed okay step 9 I'm after getting the wheels made up that's the uh, the rear wheels that's what we're calling them here um, I'm after adding the shaft but before I do that oh, I have to make up this section here as well the uh, shaft bearing okay so I made up the shaft bearing I added in these two little pieces here that slide in and the shaft then goes through that there okay goes through all them it's a beautiful fit actually it's really really nice you know once every, once the parts are all nicely cleaned up and everything else everything just slides into place the uh, back pl plate then went on with uh, the tow hook the um, it's a little pulley here that uh, it sort of it's for the the, the, the winch um, just a kind of correction thing on that um, also the exhaust pipe and whatever this thingy thingy majiggy here is now um, here oh sorry back earlier they had you putting on a uh, cable onto the, the tow hook all right which I did um, I actually used a bit of wire rather than a bit of cable so what I did then was um, I kind of continued it on out and let it droop over the uh, the, the, the rear pulley there because it would be sort of dangling over that it's probably attached onto something as well I don't know what but I have it dangling over um, I'll show you now I'll show you all that bit before I move on any further okay so there's our rear wheels right on with the shaft bearing everything spins nicely like I said beautiful beautiful fit right now getting on to this back piece here mm, could be a light on the subject um, there's the exhaust okay and here then if you can see if you can make that out there I'm after sticking the hook there's the hook there Pointy, pointy. There's the hook there, right? So it's off the um, this piece here. Now it shows on the right, but remember the whole thing is upside down. So there's the hook. There's the cable connecting up to the uh, the pulley. The last little bit of that exhaust. Um, there's these. Uh, I'd say they'd be idle adjusters in reality. Do you know what I mean? You can sort of bring your idle wheel in or out. Um, I suppose you could do it, you know, by loosening this, loosening this screw here. You've got a little bit of adjustment there on your idler, but it's glued in then down here, so you haven't got that much uh, adjustment on it at all. So um, there we go. Anyway, that bit is done, right? Then we went on to then the uh, the front suspension. Okay, we had all this little section to make up, a couple of parts you don't cement. Uh, you didn't cement in this crossbar here, it kind of slipped in under here. And also you didn't glue in the uh, the arms, so basically the only place you glued here was along here. Alright, and you push the whole lot together, held it in place with a, it was a bit of a clamp until it was dry. Did the job lovely. Um, the uh, front wheels cleaned up the tires. Just gave them a bit of a rub, of a, a rub, fairly rough sander, just to kind of give them a kind of a, a ridge around them. So I cleaned them up. We've got a front su suspension piece here, and also then these two pieces go together onto that. You don't cement it onto it, so that piece sort of swings freely. Okay, and here is that, and there is that thing. Like I said, it swings freely. Ding 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 ding, and then I was like, "Why would that hang down like that?" And I'm looking at the, I went, "All right, because it actually goes up this way, <laughs> right?" And I, I fitted it on to the to, to the um, to the chassis, just you know, test fit and just seeing it all how, how it all worked, and, and wow, it's 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 brilliant. It kind of gives a little bit of uh, sideward move motion there for uh, suspension. Not only that, look at that. And the wheels move side to side, so it's absolutely beautiful, really, really nicely done, and uh, and it works. It, you know, it, it, it actually works quite nicely. Now, 
you see here I marked it in orange on the, uh, on the instructions which means that I haven't glued it okay I haven't I haven't put these pieces on yet little poly caps um, I'm gonna wait until I because I got to I mean, I'm gonna glue on the wheels but the um, Actually, now that, now that I think of it, I could actually sort of put in the poly caps now. It's not going to make any major difference. Pop in the, those little caps because I can take off the wheels and I can get that painted with them on it like that. Um, so I don't have to sort of take them off and put them onto separate uh, spindles for painting. So, I'm glad I spotted that now. It was a kind of a as Bob Ross would say, a happy little accident. Well, it wasn't an accident. Um, it was just a happy little coincidence, shall we say? I can just take off, pop off the rubbers when I'm painting the, um, the, the 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 wheels themselves. Okay, so that whole system there works and it looks very very nice indeed. Okay, so that's step number ten. So we're on up to step eleven. Um, as you see I've marked it off so step 11 I'm going to get, just, just get that done and we'll have a look at it. We're fitting on our front suspension part and we're also fitting on our wheels. Okay, so we got to make up our wheels, right? Um, I think it's uh, 6 per side or 3 per side so it'll be 6 of each of the, I'll say 6 of each, 6 each side, 3 of each for each side. Does that make sense to you? <coughs> Makes sense to me. Okay, um, and again, what I might do is I might sort of fit on the caps, put them onto that, but not actually glue the wheels into spot. So therefore, I've got something to hold on to to get painting, to get get in behind them for painting and things like that. If you fit it on, it's going to be pretty damn awkward to get in there for painting. Okay, and also we've got the uh, the tracks to get assembled. Right. So I'm going to get all that done and like I said I'm going to just sort of fit them in loose I'm not going to glue them into place. That's what I intend to do. Now it might turn out totally different I might fit them all up and then God I can get into both sides of them. I, I, can, I can do all that I can do all the painting in, in situ but uh, to be honest with you I doubt it so I'm going to have to I'm going to leave them off for the time being we'll have a, we'll have a, a look see and see does it uh, can it be done that way okay so I'll get them done step up as far as step 11 come back and have a look at it and see what it all goes like okay so step 11 and a couple of little sub assemblies for step 11 the making of the wheels two different types putting them onto uh, a little kind of a, a bar yoke here fitting on our two poly caps and making the tracks okay so i'll get them done come back and as usual we will have a look and see what all that turned out like now i'm just marking off these because they're now completed okay for so suspension is on the wheels are on the tracks are done the little um poly caps are in these things are all made up and the wheels are all made up as well now those had to be the easiest rubber band tracks I have ever put together. There's, they're not glued, they're not um, melted. Um, it just sort of fits in and pops in. There's a connection just there. Okay. And, um, gotcha, it's they are absolutely beautiful. Okay, yes, they're a bit loose, but um, you know, when everything is painted, um, I'm not going to attach the top to the bottom uh, until it's uh, the whole thing is painted. I just checked down through the instructions. I can do it that way, so therefore I can get this whole bottom section painted. Then get the, you know, as, and, and the top as two separate pieces and all that. So it's absolutely beautiful, and the fact that I don't have to go matching up anything like. Um, uh, camouflage schemes so I'm quite happy with that I'll be just painting it uh, German grey and then um, 
white over that and sort of the old whitewash technique for a finish over that so once I'm getting say the German grey down I can you know paint all that as one piece paint and weather my tracks and then sort of super glue them down onto the wheels and once they're sort of super glued down to the wheels they're lovely okay we're going to have it now. it's going to be a nice fit really really nice fit I mean, we don't want it to I mean, we don't care the fact that it, 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 the whole thing moves around which it does I mean if you want to do it that way then yippee off you go but you know it sounds if you're going to go driving it around the table okay we don't make them as toys we make them as a sort of a static model and static means that you can't move it <laughs> simple as that and here's our suspension right like as I said you can turn the wheels left and right and remember what I was saying there you got it look at that Okay, a nice bit of uh, give there in the front so you can have sort of a bit of movement with the suspension and the same here with these. Okay, they've got, there's a bit of movement in the suspension so it's absolutely beautiful. It really, really is. It's a day. The fit and finish in this out the, on this kit is it is totally amazing me, um, especially considering the uh, the age of this kit. It's a case of fecking wow. <laughs> the only way I can describe it is in fecking wow. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And if the rest of it goes together just like this, this will be by far in my in my in my top top my top three to me a kits of all time okay without shadow of a doubt it's well up there okay but so far it, it, it's hidden there okay it really really is it's hidden there right so they're all marked off step 11 so we're on now to step 12 and this is a quick check on then to step 13 yeah we'll step 12, step 12, step 12. right step 12 we're making the driver's seat as they call it so we're making the cab we're getting the cab all made up okay so we've got our little bucket section we've got some um, uh, gear levers and brakes and all that kind of thing um, we've got say, a handbrake gear lever and the I don't know what they're thinking. It'd be probably for the, you know, for the four wheel drive, but there isn't a four wheel drive, so it's probably for engaging and disengaging the tracks and all that kind of thing. Like I said, I don't, I don't freaking know to be quite honest with you, right? Um, you've got the driver's seats there. We've also got a, um, a box there with something or whatever it is. I do not know. A fifty four. We can find out what it is. Um, we've got the spare seat here for the back. With spare seat, it's not the spare seat. It's the sort of the uh, passenger seat for when it's in transit. It's a little drop-down seat so the crew can, you know, the gun crew can kind of fit in there while the crew, while the whole thing is all nicely folded up. And that seat can be left down or up. Okay, so you can do it both ways. Um, and then we've got the dash to put in as well. And we're also sort of getting the framework of that put together okay so I'll get them done and come back and have a quick a quick a quick look at them now um, I mightn't actually fit this part here a 17 um, I take it off and uh, I, I kind of have a look at it I might fit it with a bit of say uh, a bit of PVA glue because I want to pop it off for getting this reasonably accurately painted and it depends on the awkwardness of how it's going to get in there. I won't be going for the um, the, the canopy on it, okay? Um, you can do it with with or without the canopy, and I don't think I'll be using the canopy on it, to be quite honest with you, because uh, I want to get the seat. I mean, if you're going to go to the bother of having all this nice detail in there, you want to be able to see it, okay? So. Um, I won't be using the canopy section of that. So I'll get step 12 done, construction of driver's seat as they're calling it. And uh, we'll come back then and we'll check that out. So quick look at all that there. Okay, and when they're done, we'll come back and we'll have a look at that.
Okay. Okay, so we we're on to the uh, construction of the driver's seat, as we're calling it there. I'm calling it the cab because that's what I want to call it. And I can call it the freaking flange if I want to. But it's my kit and I'll do what I want. <laughs> anyway, it's the construction of the, uh, the driver's seat section. Okay. Uh, again, no fit issues whatsoever. Beautiful fit. Really, really is a lovely fit with all these parts. Okay. Um, until I came to about here, right? So I constructed this and it just didn't kind of, I don't know, it was, it was a bit of a wobble in it. I was trying to get it to sit straight and then I came up with the idea that that fits down onto that with the cab kind of fits down in in, in, in and under. So I said, if I kind of jump ahead to this step, but just say fit this front piece and the cab then I can be sure that it's fitted properly do you know what I mean and it, it, everything sort of fits neatly into place so I did that to power okay I did that and I got it all to fit in nicely into place right um, it helped with the, uh, the getting the, the, the structure of these two sides and that top piece all nice and neat and, and, and it was the only way I could honestly th see how it was going to be done to be honest with you because it was uh, <laughs> excuse me if I didn't do it that way there was a chance that this piece here okay which is which is this piece here all right just to make sure that that was all squared in properly and all that I decided that by fitting it onto the base, because it's going to go onto the base anyway in this step, and uh, I was going, I was leaving it overnight. I wasn't actually going to move on to this step till this evening, so uh, I just stayed a little bit longer last night and I fitted it into place. Right now, I'm going to have the seat in the upright position. It's pity you can't sort of have these that they fold up and down, because the seat itself just keeps wanting to drop down, and I don't really want to go kind of. Uh, gluing it into place but I may have to I may have to sort of put a spot of glue here and here just to stop the hinge from sort of uh, moving down but um, what I might do is I might do it after I have it painted so therefore I guarantee that the seats are painted properly and that they fit up just just in case there's that little gap and you never get down in there properly so just for the, for the purposes of that that's what I did but everything else in here, as you can see, it fitted nicely. Okay, we got a few gaps in here, here and here. But um, there was no other way they were going to fit without those gaps. Everything fits in perfectly here and here. So therefore, do you mean they're supposed to be there? It's the only way I can think of it, they're supposed to be there. Whether they're supposed to be in the real vehicle or not, is another thing, but the, the, in the actual kit itself, they're there. We also have a gap here, okay, as you can see it there. Right, but um, what I'll do is I, I'll fill all those gaps with a bit of uh, a bit of spoo glue filler. Just fit in there, just the little gaps. That's just a bit of tidying up. Okay, um, that's the only sort of criticism I've had so far. And even if that, it's not really a criticism, is it? It's just it's uh, a few little gaps here and there. But we all we all use the old filler. Anyway, so we're on now to step thirteen. Okay, I'll do step 13 and then I'll move on. Well, in step 13, we're putting on the uh, the, the windscreen, uh, fitting the window, which I won't be doing until everything is painted. Okay, so I'll paint all that and then I'll fit in the uh, the window then afterwards, which is quite easy to do because it's, it's an after the uh, this thing moves up and down, so it'll be easy to fit it afterwards when all, when, when all, all the painting and weathering and all that is done, just so I won't destroy the window. Um, I've already got these pieces here fitted in so all I've got to do then is make up the, uh, the, the hood or the bonnet section whatever you want to call it and the um, excuse me the pivot then section for the um, for the gun and fit the bonnet section onto the front of that again it's down to kind of a fit issue thing here will that sort of fit neatly onto the onto the um, Onto the, the the fitting of the uh, 
of the, the vehicle itself so uh, it'll be a case of will I glue it all together or will I use the base for helping it to get together if you know what I mean we'll see how it goes um, if I need the uh, the main structure of the body you know the, the undercarriage bit just to get all them make sure that they're all nicely aligned will they need to be sort of uh, done fitted onto it just to, well, I might even just use it for structure you know um, I'll let you know um, after I get that far basically I don't know beforehand whether I need it or not so I'll get step 13 done okay there's step 13 I'll get that done and we will come back and we will have a look at it and we'll see how I got on okay so now I'm after getting step 13 done which is they call it here fixing of driver's seat okay the cab <laughs> We got the cab, the hood, uh, engine covers and all that kind of thing. It doesn't give an engine, but it's all covered over anyway. Uh, we've also got the, um, the pivot section there for the for, for our shooty bits and pieces. Okay, for all that to fit on. And we're fitting the, fit the windscreen as well. Now, there we go. It all went together quite nicely indeed. I have no problems with that whatsoever. I was kind of envisaging problems with this section here not going together but you might even just about make out there there's a little lip down there there's also a little lip on the inside of these so they just they just glue together quite nicely okay now the reason it looks a bit all gunky there is basically the, there was a bit of glue seepage and while I was holding it like that getting it to fit in along here and make sure I was getting a nice tight fit um, basically what happened was when I took my hand away I left with big gluey fingerprints on it so I had to sort of send, send them off so hence the little bit of uh, little bit of damage there on that um, it'll all be covered over with paint anyway and you won't even notice it so I'm not really worried about it too much I suppose uh, that's why I build armour rather than aircraft chunky fingers can't see what I'm doing half the time I'm a bit heavy-handed. Um, this back plate here fitted on okay, but as you see, there is a slightish little gap in there. So I'm just suspecting maybe a tiny little bit of warpage. Um, a bit of sanding off there might take a little bit of fit. I'll just wait till everything is dry and in place first. Um, because everything sort of fit, fitted in nicely um, it's just that the, as it sort of sort of started to dry it kind of slipped out but I'd say it's a tiny bit of warpage there and that considering the age of the kit I mean we're going to get little bits of warpage here and there anyway so there we go there's step 13 done so moving along swiftly so far this build has been very very nice and like I said this is well up there with um, with, with, with some of my favourite builds of Tamiya. Okay, we're on now to step 14, construction of the gates. Alright, this is where we come in with our little bit of mesh. Okay, and like I said earlier, even show it there, glue the mesh on first and then cut, then trim it, rather than trying to cut it to size. Um, if you ever get one of the Zvezda kits, they give a bit of mesh like that for covering grills and things. And they give you a little drawing of how big to cut the mesh to. And many time I've done that. And it's always just a little bit too short. You'll never get it quite right. And then I come up with the idea of actually just gluing it on and then trimming it to size. And I uh, had no problem since. Okay. Um, it's handy just to check with a small piece of it. Uh, just take a tiny little bit off and see will it will it, will it uh, work with the um, to me extra thin. If not, you'll have to use a bit of super glue. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work with the uh, to me extra thin. Although sometimes I, with the um, Svezda stuff, it works with this. It won't work with the to me extra thin, but will work with this. So whatever uh, whatever it's made of, I'll try it again with that actually. Right, so we've got our gates, we've got to make up our three gates, okay, and on our three gates we've got um, C3 for running, 
uh, oh yeah basically that's this piece here it's all folded up so we're not doing it in the running position we're doing it in the fighting position so time to go wrong with your, uh, your, with your with your marker now at this stage because we're doing it in the fighting position so anything that says running exit out of there okay um, we're not going to use the cover like I said I'm not using that right side gate, left side gate, middle gate, far gate, star gate <laughs> okay right so that was it, that was, that was, that was all the uh, things we had to worry about there so we've got three gates to make up okay we've got left to right and uh, our tail gate, the rear gate um, we've got this bit here, there's a little kind of a ladder on it. Uh, here we've got the uh, pickaxe, shovel, um, an axe, and another shovel. Okay, so we fit them first and then we fit on our uh, our mesh. Or will we do them? Or will I do the mesh first? I'll do the mesh first, but I'll put the mesh on first, leave that all dry and set up, and uh, then fit on the tools. And then we're fitting it. And there's two little pieces here, uh, C16s, two little uh, little blocks to be fitted into place. Um, we've also got a boom, 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 C7. Yeah, right. We've also got here. We've got um, C8 and C9, or. Um, Mud guards, rear mud guards. Okay, so then we're almost finished. We're almost finished. We just have uh, the last few little bits and pieces to go on. Actually, I will fit them as well. Right, we've got the two markers. We've got our mirror. We've got the Notec light. We've got um, two uh, headlights to go in. And uh, towing thingy me jiggy to go on as well, and then it's just fit the top to the bottom. And like I said, I'm not gluing the top to the bottom because it's easier for painting for me that they're in, in separate pieces and for breaking down, you know, getting the tracks off, all that kind of thing. It's just easier not to uh, fully assemble it. So the next time we see it, we'll have it all assembled up. I'll even have the gun on and everything else. Okay, and. Uh, then we got the figures to get done. So we said, well, we're not actually fully finished with construction yet, even after we get this bit done. So I get them done. I come back, and as usual, we have our little discussion and see if I went wrong or right. <laughs> okay, so I'm after finishing all the construction of it now. Okay, um, I made down the uh, the gates as they call them here and the, um, the tools onto the gates uh, that mesh glued on absolutely perfectly with um, to me an extra thin okay it actually glued in very very nicely very neat and everything else so I, I can't fault that um, actually looks, looks looks very good you'll see yourself now in a second um, also fitted the gates then we went over fitted the, uh, the lights the low tech lights the uh, these sort of indicator poles there, so the, so the driver knows where basically where the front where the front of the vehicle is um, when he's driving because these things are quite hard to sort of see around. Um, fit at the top to the bottom and fit the gun. Okay, so there she is. Okay, um, our windscreen goes up or down. Can have a either way um, as you can see all these little bits and pieces have been fitted uh, all the poles are on mirror um, the lights no tech lights um, this thing keeps popping down but like I said we, we, we will be uh, gluing it upwards after I get it painted and it decided now to just, just as I was doing the video decide to pop off Ah, typical, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Flipping typical. So, 
we just put that aside. I'm not too worried about it because it, it'll be glued in place after. Um, get a look at those uh, those tools under there and the mesh. Okay, as you see, you know that looks that looks quite nice. Okay. Taking into effect the time period, like okay, you know, know this, they probably use uh, um, a bit of photo it to make it all absolutely. Or you'd have to go bending the edges of it down and all the thing just to make it thick and awkward. And they probably have these things made out of photo which as well, just to so they can charge you an extra couple of bob onto it. Um, but everything works. You know what I mean, the um, the guns go around. They don't fire, so they they don't work that well. <laughs> But uh, it, it, it swivels quite nicely, okay, and the gun does go up and down, it elevates and deviates, goes up and down for the shooty thingy, right? So that's the construction done, okay, so we can put that now, we can put that aside, let that dry and set up and all that thing with the glue hard and do its business, okay. Um, like I said, I won't be gluing that on in place until the um, all the painting is done. Um, so all we've got left are the five figures. Okay, we've got our commander. We have the carrier, as he's called. We have the tracker, left loader, and the right loader. Okay, so it's those five figures to make. Um, so, you I mean we can sort of adjust the arms and have them all in, in the right spot so they're, 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 they're actually just not kind of hanging there in midair that this chap's arms are on the, uh, on the, on the controls basically, that he, he's doing something with them, okay. Um, so, I get the figures made, we'll come back then and we'll have a look at the figures and that'll be the end then of build update number one that will be our, uh, our build all nicely finished off. Okay, so I get the figures done, let's come back, we'll have a look at them, we'll see how they all went, and see what they all look like once they're all constructed. And um, like I said, we'll carry on from there. Okay then, so the figures are now uh, completed. Now they're gonna kinda white out there because they're white and they're out. <laughs> but, um, it's just the fact that they're all white, they, 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 um, they're going to be hard to kind of for the, the camera to focus in on. But, and they're only just all just barely placed in there, so they might even fall while we're moving it around. Okay, but there they are, they all fit in nicely. They really, really do. They're lovely. It's like as if they were made for it. And you think they were made for it. But anyway, okay, there we go. There's our figures. All made up and in place, and that's the places I'm going to have them fitted in as well. Right? So, like I said, I had no problems of in, in, in putting those figures together. They were actually quite easy. Uh, reasonable amount of uh, clean up. There was um, there was quite a kind of a large seam line down along the shoulders, down along the legs, things like that. But very easy to clean up, very very easy to clean up, bit of a scrape and a little bit of a sand and um, they won't need any filling in any areas or anything like that so you know absolutely beautiful, really really nice figures indeed. Okay so all I can say now is that's the construction finished, that's part one finished of this video and um, the next video will be the painting. Okay so we'll be getting it all painted up uh, so don't forget to stay tuned to the channel for that um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed if you have subscribed thank you very very much I really do appreciate that um, it just you know it, it does help the channel uh, the more subscribers I get and the more views people sort of put in um, I mean I, I, I'm nearly at 4,000 subscribers and uh, to be quite honest with you you know I, I, I'm amazed, I, I was amazed actually when I reached 100 subscribers, I'll tell you that much, but to reach 4,000, that's unbelievable. But anyway, let's, don't forget to join me on part two, where we'll be getting it painted, weathered, finished off, and put on a base, okay, because it just definitely deserves a nice base, 
I do have some uh, fake snow which I'll be uh, using um, so a little bit of a, a kind of a uh, I don't know, spoiler or not really, I will be doing a small dial for this. I'll be using a, a base that I already have, but I will be putting snow onto it. Okay, just to kind of um, uh, make it interesting. Make it interesting. So, lads, until I see you again, don't forget, take care, enjoy your modelling, but most important, go out and buy yourself a kit kit just like this and I definitely recommend this kit without shadow of a doubt I definitely definitely recommend this kit uh, go out and buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it this is John signing off and saying I'll catch you on the next one lads stay safe enjoy your modelling until then ta da